Malcolm, connecting our community and spreading visibility. Have you ever discovered a need for connection in your community? Malcolm Rabeau, a transgender man, began traveling around the United States over two years ago to meet others like himself. He connected with those who never met other individuals like them and didn't know there were others nearby. Learn how and why this trip began and how it grew, evolved into an ongoing initiative to help fellow transgender men find one another in their own cities and towns. Malcolm is a transgender man who started traveling over two years ago, connecting and making visible over 1,000 fellow individuals of trans male experience in 49 of 50 states in the United States thus far. His efforts have been featured in video, radio, and written forms via NBC Out, NPR Here and Now, KNKX Sound Effect, The Rainbow Times, FTM Magazine, BuzzFeed, and Transform Washington. No big deal. Please give a big CMX welcome to Malcolm Rabeau! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, I have to say, I was incredibly nervous before coming here, but I'm super grateful to have had all day yesterday to kind of get a feel for everybody and meet some new friends. And <sighs> still nervous though. <laughs> all right, so here's my story. Um... <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, two years, three months, and ten days ago. On June 11th, 2015, I started traveling around the country, um, at first without any specific mission in mind, uh, but it all started, the long, complicated story short, I had my heart broken. Thank you. It was tough, for sure. Um, I was making plans to move to Hawaii, uh, but there was going to be a waiting period between my lease ending and being able to move over there because I have a dog. That's my puppy. His name's Grayson. <laughs> um, there's going to be a waiting period because Hawaii's rabies free. So I didn't want to sign a new lease or do a month to month lease. So I was like, oh, what could I do in a couple months? Um, and I had a relatively large following on social media at the time. So I started contacting other trans men just to see if they wanted to hang out uh, while I like, did a road trip before I would move over to the island. So I made a big long list. <laughs> And then I went to Ohio for my top surgery right beforehand. Uh, this is me the day of, right after. Um, this is a couple days later. Uh, a friend of mine who's also transgender um, helped me. Uh, he took care of me afterwards. And that's me not today. I haven't been working out much lately, but <laughs> that's this past year at least. <laughs> and that's me in 2011. So. That's, that can show you some of my transition. Two weeks after I had my top surgery, I flew over to Hawaii to visit um, before I would start my road trip. And so this is me, um, the first time I was able to go into the water shirtless. What better place than Hawaii in, an, in a waterfall? Like, it was amazing. <laughs> and then outside, and I probably shouldn't have done this, but I did a hike t two and a half weeks after and it was like one of the most difficult hikes of my life. There was actually ropes involved, and, but it was great. <laughs> but then plans to move there fell through. By the time that happened, my car was already packed. I had already quit my job, um, and my lease had ended while I was actually visiting Hawaii. So I went out anyway. First, I headed east. Um, I met a couple guys here and there in a couple of states, but it wasn't until I got to Massachusetts where I met Jude where I realized that what I was doing actually had a bigger mission than just for fun at first. And it was because I was the first other trans man that he had ever met. That was totally crazy to me because my experience was that when I lived in Chicago, which is where I lived before I started traveling, I had tons of other trans friends and he didn't have anybody. It's crazy. Having fellow trans men around to be able to go to for support and to celebrate with has been completely essential for me in my own transition. Um, that was the first day that I started testosterone. Somebody actually made me a shirt that said, Malcolm the T-Rex. 
<laughs> I was counting down. I had, I had drawn that little T-Rex, and that was like my little countdown guy. And then meeting Jude actually showed me that not everybody has that support. And then the very next day, I met someone just 30 minutes from him. Neither of them knew of each other. It just started to click from there. And after that, I went to Boston proper, so down, actually in the city of Boston. And just like Chicago, there were lots of other trans men there. I was there for about a week and a half because there were so many. Um, and these are several of the trans men that I met while I was there. But they didn't all know each other. And they, some, some of them did, but, but they didn't all know each other. And some of them didn't know how to find other trans men. Because you can't just do a Google search for trans men near me. <laughs> That'd be amazing, but you can't. <laughs> At first, uh, my meetings with other people were one-on-one -on -one, um, as kind of like a matchmaking for friends uh, kind of approach. Um, this, this is actually, both of these guys are actually really good friends of mine now. Um, I've been living with him, he's TJ, um, for the past year in Spokane as kind of a home base for a bit. But this is one of my favorite stories, actually. Um, when I first started, this, the first six months, I met TJ. Um, he let me stay at his place. Him and his wife are super sweet. And then the next day, I met Jeremiah. And he had just moved from, from uh, Arkansas. He moved there with just his truck, his, his dog. And he, did, he wasn't staying anywhere. He didn't have a place to live. He just moved there because he wasn't accepted in Arkansas. Um, his family didn't accept him. His friends didn't accept him. He was completely alone. Um, so I met up with him, and he was really nice. And I had just met TJ the day before, so I was like, man, these guys would, should talk, you know? So at the beginning, um, I was just helping them kind of exchange contact information. So I asked them if they were OK with me uh, giving each other their phone numbers. And then I went on my way. Um, I found out later that they contacted each other, and they started hanging out. And I got a message from Jeremiah probably like a month later, and he said, hey, man, because of you, I now have new friends, a family, and a place to live. I sobbed when I got that message. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my list of those to meet grew and grew and grew as, as people were following my work. And, but then there was a certain point when time became an important factor. Um, money constraints. And then also, uh, my mom was actually going to be, she travels for work. And she was going to be in uh, Arizona, in Phoenix, for like an evening, like an, after, like an evening. So I could have dinner with her. But I, had to, I, I didn't want to disclude anybody. So I finally started bringing groups together. And a couple people had suggested bringing groups together before, but I thought that doing one-on-one -on -one was, was, it was working. So I was like, OK, let's keep doing this. But I started bringing groups together due to the time constraint and kept doing that and kept doing that. And I have way more pictures I could show <laughs> um, at this point, which is amazing. But this was game changing. And I. What was so game changing about it was the fact that I could see these people now connecting right in front of my eyes. Instead of like finding people that, um, seeing if they had similarities and then linking up as, like I said, like a matchmaking kind of way, I was seeing them actually doing that in person. And I still, my heart still swells every time I see them do something like this. At the end, they'll take out their phones, they'll exchange information, all excited. And you can tell, I can tell that they, they want to hang out again. One of the reasons that uh, I wanted to do it one-on-one, -on -one too, in the beginning was because I actually have some, ironically, have some social anxiety. <laughs> um, and in groups, I tend to be quiet and just kind of take on an observer role. Um, but later, I found one of the guys in this group, actually, who I became friend really good friends with when I was visiting Colorado. Um, he said, hey, I actually really like the way that you handle these groups because you don't talk very much. And the other people get to talk to each other. So I realized that that was actually the strength. I, and I was like, oh. It put, it put it all into much better perspective for me. 
Some of the most common things I hear at the meetups. I didn't know there were others like me around. I didn't know there were so many others like me around. And I had never met another trans man before. I haven't always found groups of others to connect with one another. Some areas are more rural than others, as you can imagine. Um, and here are some of, the, some of the guys that I didn't find other people around them. One from Idaho, um, a couple from South Dakota, uh, but different areas of South Dakota. So, so like he was on the uh, east side. Uh, he was in the middle, and, and he was on the west side. So they were like all the way across and just still in South Dakota, but like so far from each other, and they didn't know of each other. But I haven't considered this a failure. Still meeting these individuals. Um, still meeting these individuals has helped uh, when I share the photos, with their permission, of course, because I don't want to ever out anybody um, who's not ready to be out or doesn't want to be out or isn't safe to be out. Um, I've posted the photos with them, and it's helped other people feel less isolated. They'll see these pictures online, and maybe there's somebody that's in South Dakota that's close to this person, and they didn't realize. So they can, they can see that picture and um, hopefully reach out. So I'll post the pictures on my Instagram. Um, so here's like an example of posting it on Instagram with the, without the um, comment. Uh, and then my Tumblr as well. And then I have a Facebook page, actually, that I set up that um, all of the photo albums are by state. So I'll put you know, each, each picture in whatever state they belong in. And then say you live somewhere, you want to live somewhere, you don't know where you want to live, you can go to this Facebook page and look at all the albums I've got. And a lot, a lot of them are also tagged. So you can see like, who's in your state, who's by you, or maybe you want to move somewhere. You can see the community already in your state, or you don't know where you want to move, so you want to see where there's a large amount of trans men in a certain area. It also helps to create visibility outside of our community. Um, I found that uh, when I went back through Chicago at one point, my old CrossFit coach um, was like, hey, are all, the other guys, are all these other people that you're meeting, are they trans men too? I was like, yeah. He was like, I had no, no idea that there were other other guys like you around. It's like, yeah, we're, we're everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. So one, one hope is to help put faces to and further normalize our community and help others to see that we're just human, like any other. And here's how I organize. Um, I'll do a post with where I'm going, and then ask others to comment below or send me a message if they live in those areas. I'll add those people to my list system, which looks like this. And it actually has evolved. Um, in the very beginning, the first six months, I started on just a note. And it got very long and very difficult to uh, keep track of. But I would like have to scroll through. Every time I had one person to add to it, I had to scroll through the whole thing wherever they were on the list. So after the first six months, when I had a little bit more time, when I had to stop and earn money again, um, I created this new system, which uses the Pages app on the iPhone, and it, uh, it's by state. So anytime someone contacts me from a certain state, I can go on the states list instead, and then add them there, where the city is on there. And then I'll contact one or two of the guys on that list. Um, when I'm about to go to a place, I'll contact one or two of the guys on there, and then come up with a where and the when. Um, I'll ask them, like, where's good for a group? Where's safe for us to go? And then we'll pick a time, and then I'll reach out to everybody else on the list um, for that same specific uh, city and let them know where and when, and then ask them if they want to. They can invite other people that they might know. So it's very word of mouth. And that's a safety. That's for safety. I don't ever post where and when on my social media. Because unfortunately, there's people who are hateful in the community that have left hateful comments on my pictures. Um, and they don't know me. Uh, they don't know me personally. You know? So I don't, I, I've gotten to the point where I don't take it personally anymore. Um, but heaven forbid someone like that would show up 
they could see where and when and they would show up and I just don't even want to think about what could happen. I've learned a lot along the way so far. I've learned that gender is a social construct. Gender is a spectrum. That there's no one or right way to be a man or express one's identity, trans or otherwise. <laughs> there's no one or right way to be transgender. There's no set process, no set steps we all have to take to transition. Some trans individuals never transition. Some may socially transition, but not physically uh, or medically transition. So some might have, might, might go on hormones, some might not. Some might have surgery, some might not. Some might have surgery and not go on hormones. You know, it, it's all based on what the individual needs. I learned that we are all siblings, parents, spouses, partners, and individuals. And we can have any variety of sexual or romantic preferences. And we are human like any other. And that some individuals are kicked out of their homes and have unsupportive families. So many in our community actually have chosen families, um, and what I've, I like to call families. <laughs> and though I have an incredibly supportive family, and I'm super, super, super grateful for that, and my brother's actually here today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've got my own family. Um, of friends that I've met all over the place now. And uh, these are a couple of my, they've become a couple of my very best friends. And we do our shots together. Um, and they live in Spokane. And, um, and my partner, actually, um, right there. <laughs> um, I've learned uh, that our community as a whole is a beautifully welcoming, accepting, and embracing one. Um, along the way, I've had so many people give me places to stay, they've fed me, and they've really kept me going um, with emotional support too, and I, I wouldn't be this far without them. Several have actually reached out to me since to update and thank me. Um, some have found new roommates, uh, become close friends, and some actually keep their friendship groups. Um, that, that I've brought together, and some have like gone camping, and they'll send me pictures, and they'll hang out regularly. So that's been really cool. And then this is Jude today. I actually got to see Jude this past uh, last weekend at the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference. He's a good friend of mine now, um, and these are a couple of the other guys that I met along the way that he's become friends with since. And he's actually roommates with with River there on the on the far. Right. <laughs> and River's one of my good friends, too. So it's like everybody's just, oh, it's just amazing. So far, I've done, I've, I've done the wor this work in 49 of 50 states so far. And my intent is to go to Hawaii again. Um, I went there in the beginning. But to go there again and actually do this work there. Because before, I didn't, I didn't have my mission. The universe knows best, the future of my work. Um, everything's been really evolving and just changing and very naturally and organically. And so I've really just put my faith in the universe to kind of guide me on where I'm going next. Um, but one, 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 well, two of the thoughts I have, one of them is uh, I plan to get an RV. Um, I spent about a week up in Alaska um, recently. And I found that when I was up there and I spent an entire week there, people were getting even closer. So it was like, if so I would have one meetup, and then I'd be like, hey, do you guys want to go on a hike on Saturday? And then we went on a hike, and then they, I could see them getting even closer. And so just, just seeing that uh, the length of time and, and more meetups in a certain area helps to cultivate those relationships even stronger. So my thought is, get an RV, travel around, spend longer times in places without having to worry about imposing on someone else's home for that long of a time. And then another idea I have, um, another plan that I have is to create a website to put online um, as a huge resource for people, uh, one that they can, um, they can find each other on. Basically, the base of it would be a map. And I have a little, little symbol that I've made for myself, a little logo that would be kind of on the map and show you where I'm at. And then uh, it would be, 
account-based. So everybody that I've met so far, I'd ask them to join. And then be on this website where it's sort of like my Facebook page, but as a website on its own. So it's like you can go to a state, see if there's people there. Uh, maybe you want to move somewhere. S same as my Facebook page, but like as a full website. And then also a way for people to find resources. Because two of the most common questions I get um, on my social media is, hey, is there anybody else around? But then also, how do I start my medical transition? And I don't always know, because it's so different in every state. So this would be a way that people could find resources in their states. And I just want to say, uh, we are everywhere. Yeah. I think that's an important thing to say. <laughs> and that's something that is one of my main missions, for sure, of the work that I'm doing. And if you want to learn more, um, like was said before, uh, you, can, you can contact me and I can give you the links. But um, my work's been featured in, in these different, um, different areas. And you can contact me um, either on my Facebook page. Um, Instagram's really good. Um, I'll add Gorilla Shrimp. <laughs> so thanks for having me.